Hi, welcome to the Small Shed. This Saturday I'm tying off a few loose ends before the end of the year and that's coming up next. Hi, well this week it's a bit of a fag end of a video I'm afraid. Uh, I've been that busy working on the children's play equipment that I've not really had a lot of time to do any other um, odds and sods jobs that usually come in and, uh, and get done in the week. So I'm just going to start off with a, a catch up on a bit of unboxing that was a couple of weeks ago or unwrapping um, that was something that was perhaps of interest but um, I hadn't put it in an earlier video and there's a couple of unwraps of things for the play equipment that have arrived this week just in time to be incorporated into the build and uh, then I've got some video left over from the Men in Shed Shed Fest that was held in Worcester earlier on in the year that I went to and took a little bit of video there so we'll show that as well so, but we'll start off first with some of the unboxing now one of the things I've had this week, um, I'd already unpacked one lot of stickers for the small shed that I'm going to use for sticker swaps. Um, <clears throat> they come from a, a firm off uh, one of the eBay sellers that are in Brown Hills. Um, just basically small stickers I've had done. And they've sent me another parcel today which is something else I'd ordered, so I know what's in there, uh, but I haven't seen them yet. It looks a pretty uh, smart envelope, though. Anyone that sends something out in a sparkly envelope like that has got to be charging me too much, but um, <coughs> very nice, all the same. This is all sealed up from the same people. And I'm hoping it's... Uh, Something a bit different. Yes. So these are small stickers that have got um, a domed resin top on them. So they're rather, rather nice. Um, see those. So yes, that's um, stickers for the small shed. Quite pleased with those. Now in addition to the stickers, I've also had a couple of things arrive this week which are pretty much um, connected with the play equipment I think, or at least I hope so because with only a few days to go I'm going to need them to get uh, sorted. Yeah, that's the first thing. These are the hanging brackets for the swings themselves that will uh, hold the ropes of the swings. There's a small carabiner on a, on a hook that will bolt through the uh, bearer beam which is where the monkey bars are. And if I've got it right that's just about the right length to go through there. And there's four of those. Now I'm not sure, I wasn't sure at the time whether I'd need them. These might be surplus requirements immediately. Um, I bought some extra carabiners because I didn't think I would have be able to connect the ropes on that way but it's useful in that I'm not quite sure how the ropes themselves work on the swings. I've got them down there as to whether or not I need them at right angles or whether they're all right there. I can always move that hook around um, but as a secondary advantage um, if we want anything else other than swings, like just a knotted rope with a seat on it or something for the kids to swing on, they can just clip those in and fit them later on. And I've got a, this scrambling net I've got as well that could be hung up for them to climb up. So that's those things. I've already unwrapped the other couple of things that we've got. There's a um, seat 
spring seat for one of the boys and because the other one's a little bit smaller I've got um, a child's one that you sit inside contained I must say these contain the ropes and everything so they'll go that way so yeah it just depends how I hook these as to whether or not that will go in that way and give you um, give you a fixing at the top so that's all of the bits and pieces as I say I haven't had a lot of chance to do a lot else because we've been working pretty much flat out on seats, monkey bars and things like that this week. Most of the other stuff has already gone down to uh, Western but these things have got to go down well more or less Christmas Eve to um, put it all together hopefully. We're not sure whether we'll have a go at putting it together before Christmas or whether it'll be after but uh, I'll show you the results of that. So then we move on to the Men in Sheds gathering. It's the um, Association of Men in Sheds. This year it was close by me at the University of Worcester. So it was conveniently uh, just up the road. And it's basically just getting together all of the sheds that, that want to attend to to share best practice and knowledge and meet and greet and generally um, get together and this year there were a, a number of different people on displaying things that sheds were doing and things of interest to the shedders uh, it was sponsored by Axminster and um, they gave us a nice goodie bag with um, things in it from screws to uh, notepads and all sorts of things like that. The thing that particularly took my eye was the guy with the pole lathe, um, Touchwood Turnings. He does courses for one day for learning to turn on a pole lathe. He'll also do a three day course um, to make a pole lathe you go away at the end of it with a pole lathe and uh, if you wanted to buy one he will also just sell you a pole lathe but I think um, the I think the course is about 20 or 30 pounds less than actually buying a pole lathe built by him so but I did think it might be interesting to learn go on a day course I think it would be an interesting thing to do uh, it was just fascinating to see how these things were produced years ago by the bodgers that they used to make the chair spindles and all sorts of things like that with, with the green wood and I found it quite uh, quite an interesting thing to watch for uh, some time that I was there. One of the other uh, groups, one of the other groups of sheds had got some model boats there that um, one of the guy made again with my interest in model railways this was a sort of a similar type of thing using similar technologies they've got the uh, nowadays they've got the sound modules in the boats as well as the uh, the straightforward radio control motors controlling things and uh, again there were a lot of similar crossovers between woodworking, the model making I do, so I found that uh, pretty interesting to see all sorts of different boats and vehicles being made. And of course they've, like, like the railway locomotives I do, they've got smoke machines as well that will work. Um, and then there was a lot of traditional wood carving, making things in wood, people there doing marquetry, showing, demonstrating um, and the uh, UK woodworking site I go to on Facebook he's Bongo Wynn Woodhouse who is there routering uh, he does an awful lot of routed pallet wood panels um, 
carvings. Uh, if you go to the poultry people on YouTube, you'll find Bongo uh, doing all sorts of weird and wonderful things. And he was doing a, a plaque and getting everybody covered in chips of wood. And he also does Viking chairs and Lichtenberg carving on the wood. Um, we've got some of those there. Guy doing spoon carving, which again looked very interesting and was remarkably. I, I you always think of wood as being quite hard to carve, but he'd got green wood there that he was carving, admittedly with very sharp tools, but it was quite remarkably soft. One of the other things that they have is seminars and dem and um, talks by people there that. Um, are optional but uh, again it was quite interesting it was um, there were half a dozen breakouts during the day and at the end of it all Bongo presented his plaque for the UK Men in Sheds Association and uh, about four o'clock I think we all packed up and went back home Well, thank you for watching. Um, sorry it wasn't a bit more Christmassy in content, but um, I've been really up against it getting this uh, play area done in time, and I've just had time to, to to start making reindeer or something on a Saturday. So um, that's uh, the situation at the moment. Hope you all have a very peaceful and festive Christmas time, and I look forward to seeing you soon. Bye.